Okay. Thank you, Mark. I'd like to I'd like to call the order the June 2022 um, Airport Commission, and I'd like to start off with a roll call. See who is here and uh, who's new to the to the team. Okay. Well, Mark, we do have a new member, Alder Lisa Hanairo, and uh, other members are, and she's present. And then Michelle Bond, are you present? Yep, I see Michelle. I'm here, yep. Mayor Breyer is present. John Halleck is present. David Lorman is present. Kevin Munson is present. So that is, and, and is Luke Fassard is present. So we have all seven present. And Great. maybe this is a good chance for Lisa to, Alder Hanairo to introduce herself. Absolutely. Lisa, so welcome. Um, you want to tell us just a little bit about yourself and uh, what interests you might have in aviation? Well, thank you, Mr. Halleck. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you to uh, the mayor for appointing me to the commission. I'm a new alder person elected in April. And uh, one of the reasons I wanted to join this commission is because I know that the airport is of great interest to the residents of District 6, which I represent um, on the north side of Middleton. Um, I also have experience. I lost Grants you. and, co and cooperative agreements. Lisa, can you Am back I up, please? You cut out for some reason. Yeah. Well, saying my internet connection is unstable, so I'll see what I can do to okay. fix that. <laughs> Not sure so what I can do, but I'll try. The last thing we <laughs> heard, the last thing we heard was you said that airports of of great interest to District Six, and after that, it was hard time hearing you. Yes, uh, and Lisa, I was just uh, mute your video. Uh, mute your video. That Stop will the video. Your, yeah, that will increase your bandwidth. Okay, and then when I'm when I'm done introducing myself, I can check to make sure I'm using the right microphone because um, I have my AirPods in, and sometimes those get picked up. Anyway, I I don't have direct experience with airports, um, but I do have experience with uh, federal grants and cooperative agreements, um, and I chair the finance committee now for the city of Middleton, and so I think that makes a, a good fit coupled with the um, interest of my constituents in the airport. So I'm happy to be here and I appreciate the opportunity. Okay, well, welcome. Um, so John, we are John, a big fan here. So let's, uh, we have a new city administrator. That's what I was gonna say. Brian oh. Ghetto. Okay, we have a new city, uh, the administrator is on board here. Yeah, yeah hi everybody. Uh, just to, to introduce myself, I'm Brian Ghetto. I'm taking over for Mike Davis, who retired uh, at the beginning of this uh, of May. Uh, I come to you uh, from the city of Monona, where I was the city administrator there for a number of years. Um, and I have kind of a background in a, a lot of different things, including economic, economic development and planning uh, and a number of other things, but I'm excited to, to be here in Middleton. Uh, and I will eventually be transitioning, uh, taking over the staff uh, liaison role for the airport commission um, from uh, Mark, so I can have him focus on some other uh, projects, projects that we have in the hopper. So. Uh, he'll be with us at least uh, through this uh, meeting, and then uh, we'll worry about transition after that point. Okay. But, uh, happy well, to be here. It's a pleasure to meet you. Okay. Um, if nothing else, we'll go on to with the meeting to prove the posting, Mark. Yeah, as, uh, as always, we posted the meeting agenda on the bulletin board up front. Uh, Rich, you posted it at the airport, I presume. We, we sent it out. We sent it out via our uh, post on the city's website and via the city's listserv. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, the, the next uh, item is the election of officers at the beginning of every uh, replenishing of, of individuals on the board. We uh, are the commission, excuse me. We pick a, a new chair and a new vice chair. Um, the process is we'll open it up for some nominations. We'll vote on the chair first, um, and then we'll uh, open up for nominations for the vice chair. And then we'll um, go ahead and vote on that too. Um, so anyway, let's start out with the chair. Any nominations for um, airport commission chair? Well, I think John is, isn't it everybody? John Halleck is doing an awesome job. And John, I, I imagine you would be happy to keep on doing what you're doing, right? So- Absolutely. I'd be more than happy to, sure. Okay, I nominate John Halleck our current chair to be the chair of uh, airport commission going forward. All right, well, th thank you, Gerda. 
Um, any other nominations for anybody else? Okay, with that, I guess we should call a vote. Mark, do we do, uh, should we do this individually or just, just yes? Just no. ask, you can just ask for a vote and uh, all in favor, aye and nay, that would be fine. Okay, fine. Okay, so all in favor of John Halleck continuing with chair, please say aye. 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 Approves aye. Same, same side. Okay, thank you. Um, the next is the election of the vice chair. And I'd like to start us off by uh, nominating David Lorman. And any other uh, nominations for vice chair? Okay, here and none, do the same thing again. All in favor of David Lorman as vice chair, please say aye. 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 Opposed, opposed, same side. Okay, so David, you're the, the new vice chair. Moving on then to the next, um, we will go to the approval of the minutes. And you all should have copies of those. I'll give you a few seconds to look through them um, to make sure they're accurate. <clears throat> If there's any changes, uh, et cetera, uh, please speak up. Okay, there are none. Um, anyone like to make a, a motion for the approval of the minutes? I'll make a motion for the approval of the minutes, Chair. This is Kevin. Okay, Kevin. Anyone care to second? I'll second it. Okay, we have a, a Kevin's first um, and David second. All in favor of, of first of all, I guess any discussions? If not, all in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. same side. Okay, minutes are approved. Um, next is the chair report. Uh, the only thing that uh, that's not on the agenda that I would like to uh, comment on is I just sent an email out to TDS, Robin at TDS, regarding the installation of the uh, fiber internet at the airport. If everyone would recall, um, TDS offered at no cost to replace the infrastructure at the airport from copper to fiber. And uh, we uh, had, they required a uh, letter of access to be able to do that and the airport commission approved it and sent it on, but she said in her email, she had not received it back. So- And, and John, I, uh, when I saw your email, I forwarded that to our engineering tech um, and he had talked with me about this two or three months ago. Okay. But I right now can't recall the resolution of that. If he had concerns or what happened, it's possible that I just forgot to follow up with something. And if that's happened, I certainly apologize. Yeah. I'll check with him in the morning. I asked to talk with him in the morning. Great. So, um, I mean, we had we had um, charter come in without permission and plow stuff in the ground. So I'd like to think with permission, uh, TDS would be really, you know, we'd approve that one. So, okay, we'll stand by for that. Um, please follow up. Yeah, I, I, I'm already working on it. Okay, if there's, uh, I have nothing else to add if anybody um, wants to ask me a question about the TDS, I'd be more than happy to uh, fill in the blanks. And if not, let's move on to the next item, the airport manager's report. Rich, you're up. I am up, can everyone hear me? Yep. Okay, yep. very good. Uh, my uh, habit is to just read the reports. I know you've already scanned them probably, but I'll go through it again unless anyone objects. <clears throat> we'll start with the uh, May report, which is actually from March to April 29th, 2022. 27 noise or over flight complaints made via 26 via the phone, one via the online reporting option. Uh, we're really getting a lot of phone calls. The uh, computerized system that was set up, the online system, they just aren't being used anymore for whatever reason. Okay, all reports uh, which requested contact were addressed by phone or email by myself. 
Same period in 2021, we had 29 overfly to noise reports, so pretty similar. Uh, essentially, the next paragraph is saying we're all around the airport, we had uh, had a distribution of complaints or overflights, both north, south, east, and west. And again, the uh, predominance of them by the hill, which is very close uh, to the north and slightly to the east. All of our uh, flight school instructors and uh, have been reminded again to emphasize to their students that we do not turn out early. We go past the highway before we start our turn if we're taking off to the east. I've also spoken with Capital Flight. Matt has heard me that that information is out with his uh, instructors as well. Airport safety, no accidents or incidents on the field in this time period. Maintenance, we're still waiting on our NOx boxes. I'm not sure what the hang up is on all of that, uh, but when they do get arrived, we know where to install them. A control burn, the easternmost ditch, the one that we uh, were able to do the um, mechanical uh, willow grinding on uh, this uh, late winter, early spring result, had very good result. Uh, it was just very nicely done. There was some additional burning at one, one day, a very little, and then it's beyond our, our season to do any burning until possibly in the fall, and we'll re reassess that. Just happened to be a combination of bad weather and uh, uh, the fellow that, that John who was uh, doing this uh, burning uh, his schedule as well. And construct, construction did start uh, May 2nd on the LED upgrade to the runway and taxiway and navigation lights. So I'll tell you more about that in the next one. Okay, women in aviation use the planning or the our conference room for planning an event. Uh, of course, we're in our 80th year of operation at this location or your airplane company that is. Uh, okay, I believe it's going to be, well, uh, in June, mid-June, the Wisconsin 99s and women in aviation and the EA chapter 93 will be painting a compass rose on the ramp. This is a, a lot of airports have these. We've been wanting to do it for years. We finally have the ramp uh, surface done and the COVID has gotten to the point where people feel comfortable working together. So we'll be doing that. July 10, EA chapter uh, 93 pancake breakfast. Come on out, bring an appetite. Uh, July 10th, also possibly an 80th anniversary event. I'm not so good at planning parties as some folks, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, we may end up moving that to the fall. July 12th, meet your air traffic controller at 6 p.m. We're hosting it in the uh, our uh, hangar because last year we definitely couldn't put it in the conference room. There were well more than 30 individuals. Maury Airplane Company rents the chairs and uh, provides the facility uh, free, uh, right, no charge for any of these safety related events. And uh, this one is gonna be hosted by our uh, state rep, uh, the uh, Jörg uh, Rosenbacher, not, and we will not be presenting it. July 23rd, Capital Flight, rock the ramp. August 13th, uh, Capital Speed Cruise in, and then we have Again, three chapter 93 Young Eagle events coming up. Um, I don't have the exact dates on those yet, but check our website. We'll post them when we get them. Any questions about um, that period? My, my only question is these knock boxes have been a, 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 a monthly line item. I thought we were gonna follow up with the fire department and find out where they're at, Mark. Yeah, and I, Mike was overseeing that and I guess, and Brian, I, my guess is he hasn't mentioned anything to you. So I think we're going to be, I'll do that, or Brian will do that with the fire department. Okay. So when uh, I'm, just, I'm surprised that they haven't been installed, I, I thought they were here, but I. But they may be somewhere, but unless Rich gets them, they can't be installed. So right. <clears throat> we need to follow up with, with uh, Brian on that, if you would, please. Brian, I'll brief you on that. Of course, there's a couple other hands up, uh, Chair. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't see all the hands. That's okay. Hold her on, Yep. 
Yes, I just had one question about the um, pancake breakfast. Is that event open to the public and is there a charge? It is open to the public and I believe they've settled on $10 a breakfast. It's always been open to the public. Uh, and uh, yeah, the cost of food has gone up as we all know, so. Sure. Okay, I just wanted to know because I do a monthly e-newsletter to District 6 residents and I always include events that are coming up this month. Um, I just sent my newsletter yesterday, so I'll make sure I put the pancake breakfast and I already had planned to put Rock the Ramp in for the July newsletter, so. That oh, very help. good, I'd uh, very much appreciate that as would chapter 93. Yeah, I mean, people can attend and, and uh, mill around. It, it only costs for the meal. Yep, exactly. There's no, no gate charge. And we should have fire department will be here again, probably the uh, med flight if they can sneak it in. All sorts of neat stuff. Good. Lisa, is that all you had to ask? Great. Okay, Kevin, I see your hands up. Yeah, I'm trying to get my video is not working. So anyway, maybe it's working now. So I, I, Rich, I think I maybe mentioned this a couple of months ago that the, for whatever reason this year, there's just an unbelievable amount of large birds in the area. I don't have any empirical data myself to support that, but as far as the really large birds, the swans, the geese, the egrets, herons, cranes, uh, red-tailed hawks, uh, bald eagles, uh, it, it looks like maybe five to 10 times as many as usual, which I guess is great for the environment, but just to keep your flight instructors and your pilots aware, because when these big birds, when you hit them, it's, it's ugly. So just you know, I know that you said you've seen more cranes, but these, I've never seen so many in my life. So I, I just thought maybe uh, you could just make the pilots and flight instructors aware that uh, we've had a lot come in this year to nest and they're just hanging out. Uh, thank you, Kevin. We, we do, and actually even in the pattern when we're up, uh, we'll see the vultures or thermaling off the end of the runway. And if someone is in the pattern, they'll let everyone else know what's going on. I'm sure Dave can attest to that. Um, yeah, the uh, luckily the geese, the big, the big stuff, uh, a lot of it's moved through those. Uh, we had white pelicans on the pond uh, south of us of all plate things. Uh, the, pel the pelicans? Yeah. The uh, yeah, uh, the 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 vultures, the turkey vultures, all these big birds are just everywhere. So yeah. yeah, we're keeping our eyes open. Believe me, but thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Lorman. Uh, one event um, Saturday, June eleventh. There is also a young eagles. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, when, when is that again, Dave? Oh, uh, Saturday the eleventh is, is the eleventh is a Saturday, if I'm correct. Yeah, okay. Yep, I, uh, I think uh, our Alder Hanaro can add that to her. Um, if, if it's in June, I've already sent that newsletter out, but oh, I see okay. that there are, it says in the report that there are three young eagle flights. That's what you're talking about? Uh, okay, so there wasn't a date on there, but it's Saturday, yeah. Okay. If you let if you let me know the dates of the others, I'll put the put them in. Yeah, the the uh, local EAA chapter is um, they I think they're uh, they struggle with their mailing list a little bit and some technology. So it's just um, sometimes those dates just don't I don't know they don't make their way out. <laughs> it's more of an organic process. Okay. Well. I'll try to get a hold of the, uh, Shane Baker, the president. And maybe we can do a joint uh, ad in the Times Tribune and uh, review, uh, get some of the lo local kids out. All right, thank you. Um, does anybody else have any questions or comments? If not, we'll move on to the next item. OK. Uh, okay. Of course, this is for the June 2nd from April 20th. Oh, all right, OK. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize there was two back to back. Go ahead, Rich. Yeah, I'm sorry. John. Yep. April 29 to May 27, only nine overflight or noise complaints were made, eight via the phone, one via an online reporting. 
or we're, we're from one individual and that individual is on top of the hill just to the northeast. Okay, again, contacted everyone by email or by phone. And yeah, no accidents or incidents. We already know about the Knox boxes. Uh, the runway lights, LEDs are done on the runway. They're working on the taxiway right now. Uh, they're doing a very good job. I wish they'd let us know a little bit more ahead of time when they were gonna close things. Sorry guys, but when they, your contractor tells you they need to close these taxiways, we got to do it and get the job done quickly. Um, also, the street department came in and marked all of our uh, taxiways that uh, lead to the hangars with uh, painted them, as was requested, I believe, last year. So it's uh, that was nicely done. Um, yep, uh, all of the same events are listed here. And uh, well, no real addition to any of that, except for the 11th, I think that's Saturday, June 11th, if I remember. Okay, thank you, Rich. Any questions about the, the June um, airport manager's report? So I have a question for Rich. That is that, uh, is it new that people complaining in the northeast corner there that uh, whatever that high circle is, or, or did you have that in the past too? We, we have one, at least one new resident uh, uh, there who, um, and he and his, his partner call regularly. Um, and I, I'm not, I certainly don't blame them for doing so. There's no reason why we shouldn't be following the voluntary noise abatement procedure and going uh, east of his, uh, their hill before turning. In the past, we would get calls periodically, but only if someone did something really, you know, a low turnout over. I do believe this fellow is calling even if we're at pattern altitude and go over the top of his house. Uh, again, we uh, certainly try to do everything in our power to get our people to be turning out after the highway. We're, we're kind of threading a needle because if you go <clears throat> too far east, we're going to get noise complaints. And if we're too, too far west, obviously we get a call uh, we're going over the corridor between Highway 12 and uh, Parmenter, and that's not a very wide corridor, but that's what we've always tried to do. So. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Weather conditions dependent. Yes, and we do have a pilot handbook that we wrote a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and hopefully all the pilots that are renting and the pilots on field have a copy of the pilot handbook that explains the ins and outs of uh, our traffic patterns and altitudes and all the requirements as specified by the FAA that they should follow. So um, it's on our website, on the airport website, and we spent uh, quite a bit of time making sure that it was accurate and contained all the applicable federal aviation regulations. So. Okay, um, if nothing else, let's move on to the airport financials. I, I have uh, just uh, two oh, I'm sorry, David, I'm gonna have to do a better job of looking at hands. All right, there you go. I, I raised it and then I unraised it. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Uh, one, uh, one question, Rich. Um, uh, the VASI, our VASIs. Um, Either, none of the runway end identifier lights or the uh, the Pappies, we won't be going with Bazzies. They, they don't install those anymore. Um, oh, okay. And we had Pappies before. Um, are, they have not been addressed yet. I'm not exactly sure when they will be addressed, uh, okay. when they come in, I'm sure. But uh, at the moment, they're working to get the, uh, the taxiway lights squared away. Gotcha. Now, I was out doing some night operations, and uh, uh, it was a new rain experience. Um, and yeah, <laughs> and uh, so I thank thank you much. I appreciate that. Yeah, I talked to Josh uh, at uh, BOA about a week ago. He said that they were on schedule and um, on budget or close to budget. Um, I think within two thousand dollars. So um, hopefully the project will get done. Um, you know, on time. Okay. 
Yes, we're, we're hope, very much looking forward to it. Yes, we all are. Okay, um, no other questions and no other hands. Sorry, David. I'll move on to the airport financials. And so for the benefit of those who haven't been on the commission or haven't seen this before. So every year we put together a budget. Uh, the budget is based on, um, we take a three year run rate for each of the individual items and try to project a, a trajectory for it. And then we go through each item and see, is there something different going to happen within that we, that we know about within the coming year? And then we make an adjustment um, to that trend line based on uh, what, uh, what the number is. Many of the numbers are very straightforward. The hangar land leases are a known number. Um, we raised them last year and they're fixed per the contract for five years. Um, MADC leases some land, that's a fixed number. Uh, the fuel flowage is uh, a pretty constant um, year over year. Um, there is no FBO contract, that's a remnant. We've combined it with now with uh, down below with the airport manager's contract. Uh, the cropland rent is a uh, pretty much a known number. The solar land rent is a known number. Um, we have this year um, grants. There is a CARES 2 and there's a CARES 3. Um, I contacted uh, Bill. The 46 number, thousand number should be $82,000. And he'll correct it in the next uh, iteration of the, um, the funds. So this is pretty much our operating fund. Um, down below is the same numbers. Our telephones are fairly well known. Um, we get that fed to us from Bill, the utilities from Bill, the insurance from Bill, the ground maintenance. Uh, Rich and I put that together. Uh, prairie maintenance is a constant. Uh, we reduce the land line, landing light maintenance from five to two and doesn't look like we'll even use that. The airport manager's contract is a, a, a written contract. Um, outside services and primarily legal. Um, the entitlement match is uh, off, off the, from what we originally said. And the reason was that we normally pay 8,334,000 a year on our $150,000 AIP match. We missed one, so it doubled up. And then we have a new bipartisan infrastructure legislation um, grant, um, which is not on this, and that uh, requires a match too. And so the combination of the missed entitlement and the bills match is 33057. Again, we couldn't project that. Um, operating expenses, I have no idea what the uh, capital outlay is. To be honest with you, I think we were thinking about that being the fuel, but the things have changed. And so that is going to be somewhat different. If you take a look at the, if you go to the right and you take a look at the, where we're at, um, we're, we're well within the band of tolerance. Um, we're probably under budget on the expenditures um, and we're, uh, but you know, that we will gain that um, through the year. So this is pretty straightforward budgeting um, based on historic numbers. And this is kind of a closed ecosystem, if you will. This covers the daily operations of it. It gets more complicated when you start looking at, at um, government funds, the Bureau of Aeronautics, and you look at the FAA. There are several categories, and we have to have matches for those. And so for the bill and um, the AIP, that is the entitlement match. So we get $150,000 a year um, for the AIP. This year's is not encumbered. So all of the work that we've got and the, what we've negotiated for the landing lights is, is all covered. So we shouldn't uh, have to dig into that at all. In addition, we also have $295,000 worth of bipartisan uh, infrastructure legislation money. So uh, between the, the two, we have, there's about, uh, looks like about $445,000 um, and some change. Uh, that we have uh, to use for our pro other projects. 
Um, other projects that uh, that are in the queue right now is uh, we have to prioritize some, but um, we didn't realize that we could get the fuel unleaded avgas tank funding. <laughs> And so that will come out of the next round of uh, AIP and bill funding. And then we have to maintain our surfaces, our, our runways. Um, and that will happen probably in 2026, but it's a very expensive proposition um, to do the runway and the taxiways and everything is probably close to $5 million. And so it's gonna take quite a bit of our money, but you know, a lot of the money, other money will come from uh, AIP and um, discretionary funding and uh, other funds that the FAA will apply. And so we'll start working on that at the completion of the uh, run, uh, runway lighting. I think that's a fairly decent summary of where we're at. Um, any questions about the airport funds? Yeah, I got some questions. If yep. you would look at the utilities uh, for Mark, <laughs> it's uh, 6,700. What happened? Otherwise, it's 879, What is it? I'm sorry. So you say utilities is primarily our electric? Uh, I don't know what it is, but look at that. It's uh, 67, 6,736 for March. Normally, it is just 879, 892. Yeah. Well, th this comes from bill. Uh, the utility bills are from uh, are projected from the, the city treasurer, and it looks to me like they probably have some large quarterly number. I, I mean, I'd have to ask Bill on that. Um, that's really not an airport operations, other than you know um, the numbers that we're fed by the city um, to put into the um, to put into the uh, the funds projections. So I can't okay. answer that, but um, we certainly can make a note or I'll make a note. I'll ask Bill and I'll get an answer for you at the next at the next airport commission meeting. Mayor, I'm trying to I'm trying to pull up last year's March report to see if I can get an answer for you. Mm -hmm. um, OK, it's 10 times just about the 10 times the regular amount. So it just is surprising. So. Well, it's twenty five thousand dollars, and so we're a quarter of the way into it, right? So twenty five uh, divided by four. Um, so you would figure that we, you know, we're probably a little over budget. It looks like, but I don't know what that why. They're okay. Yeah, that's all right. It, it happened so. last year. It happened last year too. I oh. see. Okay. Okay. So that, like, you know, as, as uh, Chair Halleck was speculating, I think that's a quarterly, some sort of quarterly, I don't know what the details are, but it gets coded. The city administrator, Mike, used to, co had coded all these bills previously, so I can't speak to each one, uh, certainly not from memory. So, uh, but I know the pattern is the same as last year. Okay, thank you, Mark. Now, John, about the... Uh, runway, it's in pretty good shape right now. You said it could cost about $5 million. So so we get about 150 or 180 from uh, yep. BOA per year. So they also have that special funds, I guess, which yes. you can get. But uh, so when do you think we might re need to do the, redo the runway? So let me kind of ex explain the process to you. The Bureau of Aeronautics comes out and inspects the runways every year. And they make a determination um, on the timing of the resurfacing. So the surfacing of the taxiway um, is being projected, I think, at 2026. I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but you'll we'll do that after we get the lighting done for next month. Um, and then they project it after that. So I, I've got some numbers, some preliminary numbers. I think that if we take our bills money and um, and I can get Josh and I can put together a thing, we pretty well got it covered within our operating dollars and our AIP funds. So we will ask for federal uh, support, which we probably will get. If, if you recall back when the landing lights were, uh, runway lights were put in, we didn't have anywhere near enough money, but we went and we got discretionary funding. 
I mean, we, 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 <laughs> we worked all the pockets and we got all the money to actually get everything paid for without the city having to come up with any additional money. And I suspect that the same thing will happen with the runway surfacing. Okay, that, that's good because this is, you know, 5 million is a lot more than $400,000 or, or, or 500,000. Yeah, that's, that's, our, that's in total. You have to remember, we only pay a small portion. In some cases, we only pay 5%. Um, in some cases, we pay 20%. And in, in some cases, we don't have to pay anything. It all depends on what category um, that the, uh, uh, the remediation falls in. But there's also things like the AIP funds. So we're a block grant state. The FAA gives money to the BOA to hand out to the airports 150,000 a year. Some airports don't use their 150,000. And then they have the ability to reallocate that and they reallocate it to us. So dealing with the Good with the BOA and the FAA is a little bit fluid. <laughs> you know, the, the numbers aren't always exactly right and funding changes as the projects go, um, but they're usually uh, pretty darn close. Yeah, I want to make sure that if we are getting $150,000 from BOA as a block grant, Let's make sure that we do use it every year. So, so we don't want somebody else to be taking it. So. No, yeah, we will use it and we, we can bank it. We can also bank uh, additional grants that are given to us. Um, the one question that we had was on the bipartisan infrastructure legislation. That may actually have some usage dates on it. And Josh was going to check and get back to me on that. So that may be something that where we have to spend that money in a timely basis. And we do have projects. I mean, we have the, you know, the unleaded fuel project. And so there's always ongoing projects and we will use the people's money uh, appropriately. Um, I spend, or I recommend money like it's coming out of my own pocket and I'm pretty cheap. So we don't spend anything we don't really need. Okay, good, thank you. You're welcome. And John, I think it's worth noting that the federal funding sources are derived from uh, aviation user fees. And I, I mean, I can't speak to what all the sources sure. are exactly, but it's derived from fees uh, uh, generated by the aviation industry. Is that your understanding? Yeah, it's, it's actually even broader than that. It's, it's a Department of Transportation. They collect all kinds of taxes for roads and, and, and uh, seat taxes and fuel taxes and and uh, that's what funds the aviation system and, and, uh, and all of the transportation system. So right. some of it is dedicated uh, to go to, to each of the one that's that generated the funds. But on the other hand, there are some that can go between uh, transportation modes, I believe. And then the local match that we have been allocating as that John covered in our budget here, that is coming from our local airport generated sources, such as the, the uh, tax on the fuel sales, land lease revenue, et cetera. So that's where our local pot of money is coming from. The, the general city budget does not make an allocation to the airport enterprise fund. Yeah, we have way. used TIF funding yeah. uh, in the past for, um, for example, the master plan and the original development of the airport, the local match there came from TIF funding, but um, uh, but there hasn't been general property tax dollars spent on the airport uh, other than through any sort of, like just like we do with the golf course and any other projects with the city, city staff time, you know, there's some, you know, you one could quibble about that, but you know, we all, the airport fund, enterprise fund, the funding is strictly from aviation sources. Mm -hmm. And we, we, like you say, we run a fairly tight ship. It's mostly control. There's very little that we have, we can manipulate, if you will. Um, the contracts that uh, can be escalated or have timelines on them and have limitations of how much it can be raised. So there's very few levers we actually have. And so we just have to match our uh, costs, if you will, with, with the money that we have to spend. And we don't really ask the city for money unless it's some item that really doesn't uh, relate to the operations of the airport. I mean, we ask the, the city for the avgas, uh, unleaded avgas, some help there. 
because honestly, it's legal for these people to use fuel that we have. And the, the tanks were really for the benefit of the community more than it was for the benefit of the airport. So we felt, or I felt, as I put it, I made, I made a motion that it was um, a reasonable ask, if you would, because it was for the community's benefit. Otherwise it may not have happened. Excellent, John. Okay. All right. With that, let's move on to the next thing. Um, so we have, uh, at everybody's request, we wanted to do a survey, and this would be the basis um, for putting together a list and a projection of what we may need. I, I put together some basic questions, and uh, you know, uh, certainly, you know, the purpose of this conversation is to figure out what else we might want to ask. Um, we had some identify. We did the, a survey similar to this before. And we asked for some identifying information about who they were and where they were. So we just carry that forward. Um, are you interested in securing a hangar space for your aircraft? So the, the first top is, is pilots. And the answer is yes, no, whatever. Um, do you currently have hangar space at the airport? And not that it means anything, but if we wanted to be spread out opportunity, you know, that might come into play. Um, if they do have a uh, hangar space, I ask for the address of the hangar. Um, we ask for their aircraft, the make and models, and they maybe have multiples and to list those out. That gives us an idea of wingspan and, you know, kind of the footprint. Um, is your aircraft used for activities other than sport aviation? And a lot of people use them for business um, and uh, commuting. And so we ask what that was, um, what amenities they like in their hangar, heat, water, electric, landline, phone, bathrooms, high-speed internet. Um, we have most of that available. What size hangar are you contemplating? So do they want a 50 by 50 or a 60 by 60 or 80 by 80 or whatever the size is? Um, a key question um, is, are you willing to share a hangar with others? Because our land leases are a function of the size of the hangar. A larger hangar will generate more revenue to the airport than a small hangar. It's also a better use of space. So um, we thought that would be, a, I thought that would be a reasonable question to ask. And then the last question would be, are you willing to rent space in a Middleton Municipal owned hangar on a long-term lease? So the basis of the question is, is this. The MADC um, built the uh, airport terminal building and, um, and over the period of time, they probably returned three times what they put into it. So as a potential source of revenue, it could be that the city through TIF funds or other funds beyond obviously uh, what's available this is not available for FAA funding or BAA funding, and we certainly don't have the money in the, in the revolving pool, but it may be something we would think about where after the 10 year lease, so we, we, we would sign the lease with the individual, we would then use that contract, uh, TIF money to build it. And then at the end of the 10 year period, we would have a, a, you know, a landfall of money that we would use to take care of the airport. <clears throat> And it would not, you know, um, it, it lessens the potential that there would be a, a burden to, to um, taxpayers. So that's the general thinking. Um, so we'll see what people have to say. And then businesses, I mean, we built the airport or we, we the city built as an economic hub. It was funded by the FAA um, as, a, a, you know, what it does for uh, economics. So we asked for information on their business and they'd be interested in running a hangar for an airport related business, you know, such as avionics or a paint shop or something that would bring um, uh, revenue, um, a same amount of amenity, amenities, and then the size of the hangar they're, they're contemplating. And I would think we would maybe want to give this to the Chamber of Commerce um, so that they could uh, hand out to their members. 
um, to see if anybody, because they may be interested in not having availability. And uh, we would also maybe print some of these up and leave them on the counter um, in the terminal buildings for people to try to fill out. Um, the result of this would be uh, an inventory of what we think uh, could happen. And that would impact the layout of any additional hangar space at the time that could be funded. Um, honestly, right now, I'm not sure how that would be funded because it's gonna take pretty much everything we've got to take care of what we've got. But um, it all depends on the, you know, what the interest is uh, and whether or not the city sees this as a priority for themselves. So these are the questions that I kind of come up with. The, you know, I'm open to any additional questions that you think we ought to put on this um, this survey. Does anybody yeah. got any questions? Yeah, John, I would say that uh, you know we need their uh, address where they're living and their business address. I know you put the business there, but yeah, uh, yeah, that's a whether, yeah, whether they're pilot or whatever. But we need to know where they're living because. Uh, in the end, we may give the preference to those who live and have the business in Middleton than those who are outside. And uh, that, that uh, well, that could become a, if there's a lot of demand, a deciding factor. In fact, that would be important for, for the city, so. Yeah, well, you, you'll need, we'll need to verify the fact that we can do that because <clears throat> there's, um, in the, um, if, if you take a look at your, um, Ranch assurances. assurances. I think the assurances says that we will take we will treat a aviation without prejudice, and so we would not have anybody um, a ahead of anybody else. It could be any type of airplane, uh, you know, race, ethnicity, where they live, anything of that. And I think that's in the assurances. Uh, and there's an equity part of it, but we'll double check with that if, if that's a, a something that the city's interested in just to make sure it's something that's legal. John, I agree wholeheartedly with you that I think that would be problematic to, uh, that, that would be a problematic way of limiting um, investment in the airport, but we will double check. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, if there are problems, we can always find solutions, but I think uh, the city's preference will be those who are here in Middleton. So they will be, well, anyway, that would be, they will be given the preference, but we will check whatever is needed to make that happen, so. Yeah, well, make sure it's legal, yes. Yeah, yeah, we will make sure it's legal and uh, and what is it we need to do to make it legal too, so. Well, we have a copy of the assurances or you, you folks should have one. And if you don't, I can get you a copy of the signed agreement that you have with the FAA. And the stipulations, you know, unfortunately, a lot of cities don't read them. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot, there's, there's, there's a lot of hooks. So, you know, you, you should try to peruse it. John, I'll get the, I'll get commission members a copy of those. Yeah, that would be great, you know, so that we know that we're, we're not coloring outside the lines. Yeah, well, remember, John, anything can be changed. So I, I think it just, uh, that is the starting point, so. Okay, great. Absolutely. Is there if there's, anybody else? If there's federal okay. grant assurances, it's going to be hard to change those, Mayor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't change anything in the assurances, but. Uh, well, we will look into it, so. Okay. Um, okay, let's start at the top. Lisa? Sure. Um, thanks. I had a couple of questions, and I can just comment that, yeah, assurances, terms and conditions, those are pretty much boilerplate and yeah. go through a lot of review and approval. And so it's very, I've never seen anything change specifically for a, a particular grant or cooperative agreement. So, um, but I, I just wanted to comment on the, the concept of a long-term lease. I think I would give an example because long-term could mean different things to different people. So the more specificity you could put in there, the better. And yeah. then also I think I re have been watching different, um, you know, the, the most recent airport commission meetings. And I thought Kevin had brought up on the March meeting that um, he suggested having an official list of people who wanted to, you know, a, an official waiting list for hangers that's posted publicly. And he also mentioned there should be a fee to get on the list. And if the other members of the commission agree with that, 
I would add that somewhere. Would you be, as a question, would you be willing to pay for a place in this, on this waiting list? Not that we would charge them, you know, to fill out the survey, but just to find out if they're willing to pay and if others think maybe even putting a dollar amount to it so that they would know what they'd be asked to pay, that might be useful too. Yeah, I was thinking originally like uh, the, the leases are, the land leases, I have to think uh, uh, right now, like I would think they were 10 or 15 years. And so I thought the payback term on the, the, the building would be the same term as the land lease, only instead it would incorporate the physical structure. And then the physical structure would obviously, you know, be estimated at, the, at that time. So that was kind of the thought process, you know, obviously it's just a thought. It, it's the airport commission to decide. And, and I would note, uh, Alder Hanero, that we had the same approach for um, when we first opened up land for hangar development, we had a $500 fee, I believe it was back in 2004. So I think that's a very reasonable approach to, you know, basically make sure that people are serious, you know, that they have skin in the game, so to speak. So and, yeah, I, I don't good. know what our terms were with that. If they, I, <laughs> they got it back, they decided not to go forward. I, I, I don't recall, John. I mean, it goes back, it goes back 18 yeah, years. Yeah, I know. I was there. <laughs> so, you know, the, the issue I have with this is if you're asking somebody for $500 on something that you have no idea whether it will ever materialize, <clears throat> that's, to me, I think it's somewhat problematic because we don't really know if the city is willing to, um, to, to rec so the way the process will have to go is the airport commission have to make a recommendation, but the common council is going to have to say, hey, FAA, BOA, we want to do this part of the master plan. And until that happens, there really is nothing known. So I'm not sure I'm comfortable asking people for money for something that may never materialize. So that's something for us to think about. Okay. Uh, David, right, go ahead. David Lorman. Oh, okay. Um, do, do you think there would be value in the, adding to the survey? Um, looking forward to uh, aircraft uh, fuel consumption capabilities. Would we want something in there about is, can your aircraft consume unleaded fuel? Um, we, we could ask for their estimated hours. In fuel. Oh, uh, yeah, or or really just you know, capability to consume unleaded fuel. I mean, if you know, if we're going to move in that direction, sure. it, would it be anything useful? Sure, that's a good. Yeah, really. Yeah, really more about unleaded fuel than than volume. I guess at I, this I get point. It. Yeah. You know, I think you know if you actually took a look at the, um, and I can speak for myself, unfortunately, if you take a look at the people that own aircraft, they don't really fly them anywhere near as much as you think they do. Uh, my my logbook is a little bit anemic right now, and so <laughs> it's it's not that much. Uh, Kevin, your hands up next. Uh, yes, um, sure. Yeah, first the hangar list. So I I've been asked so many times, you know. Where's the hangar list, especially for new people moving in and they may have an airplane or something. And, yeah. you know, I always say, well, we, we don't have any hangars available and we're not really planning on building anymore. At least the, there's no firm commitment to that. And they don't care. They just want to be on a list. And, I, you know, as far as a fee, I was thinking more of an annual maintenance fee, like $15 or $100, just, just to keep those that are really interested in hangers on the list and those that are just want to be on the list that are aren't as interested so that that's what that's where the hanger list was coming from There's so many people that have inquired you know when i was when i was working before i retired and yeah. and then just people so there's there's a lot of interest out there yeah. So the, the other thing is yeah i, I agree with lisa the aip uh, federal grant assurances it's you know that's our foundation that's you know, and those are federal requirements that we have to stick to. So it really, really would be the benefit of everyone to have a copy of it, to, to read it, to get on the internet and look at each uh, section of that grant and study it a little bit and see what's actually required and, and how you do it. It's, 
it's the foundation. I remember taking a test in graduate school on that AIP grant assurance. So it's very important. And that's the only two things I wanted to say. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Chair, um, Chair Halleck, if I may quickly interject in case you haven't noticed on the screen, yeah. I assume you see the highlighting on the screen, yeah. do you? So yeah. um, uh, this is from our form in 2004. So what we did is we took the, had a $500 fee and then applied that fee to the cost of design review and the building permit process. Yeah, the only problem is with this, we knew what we were building. The, the hangar space was approved and they were, they were going in, you know, and we knew the sizes and everything else. Right now, we don't really know much what will happen um, unless we make a recommendation um, and I certainly could put that on the agenda and, and uh, the city wants to build, but I think it's premature until we see what the interest is. Yeah, actually, John, back then, this forum was designed to get people who were interested and then we worked with them to discuss what their space needs were. So we actually had a lottery system because there was so much interest. Yeah. And then we had them come up with the size that, look, yeah. the, you know, we assigned the, look, we had the right to determine the location on the, of the uh, hangar on the airport property and developed yeah. a site plan with them. So anyway, we, you know, we were new to that business back then. Now we have 20 years of, almost 20 years of experience. So we'll make sure we have a, the right procedures in place. And I think fees and all that are obviously part of that. Yeah, we, if we, I mean, I helped do this. I helped write most of this. The, uh, and the fees were, were based on <clears throat> uh, the surrounding market area and Madison. And then we did some uh, distance calculations and averaging to determine how far somebody might go. And that's where all that, uh, the genesis of all those numbers were. But um, yeah, we'll, 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 put, we'll have a, a cogent process. Let's at least gather some data as a place to start. And, and I think the list, I, I, where it really should live, it should be a, a page on the airport website where people can go on to the website and can put their name on a list with a date stamp on it. And then um, that data would go into an Excel database or whatever, as opposed to a sheet somewhere. So that would be uh, the optimal place, in my opinion, for a long term. So, uh, Rich, you have your hand up. Yeah, I agree with you, John. Right now, we do have a list. The list actually works um, because it's just a preference. We had a, one hangar owner who wanted to sell his hangar, wasn't really tied into the, uh, the, the network out here, just asked uh, our office manager to fax, or excuse me, scan it and send it to him. And he sold his hangar within, I think, two weeks. What, probably closer to one week to someone who's on the list and interested. He just started going down the list and asked. So it works for what it is, but yeah, this isn't, it isn't adequate for a new build by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. Thank you, Rich. Um, oh, I, my, my question really is, so when can we put together some, just some basic numbers based on, um, uh, enthusiasm um, and a survey so we could at least say okay we there's interest in just for the sake of discussion 10 more hangers now we look at the uh, uh, airport layout plan and say okay how how would how would the this growth fit into that um, so we just start to have some I guess some talking some points to talk about in our commission meetings moving forward so we can formulate in our head because I think yeah, the city does have to say at some point, okay, clearly um, we can build uh, 10 hangers, but there, but, but we have a waiting list of 150 people, 150 hangers. And so all things being uh, economically strong, you know, the ABA, general aviation is gonna remain stable. It'll take you know five years to make all this happen, maybe longer, who knows? Um, and we can then maybe just move ahead and say, okay, let's let's move ahead with, you know, the first phase of, of a potential opportunity to move in that direction. Okay, all right. 
Mayor, you had your hand up? Yeah, so I, I like uh, Leith and what the others have said that we are just asking a question that would you be willing to put uh, some money there? I think it's just asking a question and that's a good thing to have because yeah. uh, people can just say, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, I want to hang it there. And uh, th th then when the time comes, you know, they are not there. So, so I think uh, before the city can uh, commit any money to, and development and all of that, you got to actually know that as Mark or the others have said, there has to be skin in the game. And even in, when we did in 2004 or 1998, whenever that was, so, you know, they paid down <clears throat> some money there. That was 500 at that time. You're talking about with all the inflation, 500 will be a lot more now. In any case, I think uh, just asking if they're willing to, you know, put some money in there and, uh, they, if there's a maintenance fee, just to keeping their name there, and I think that's actually a good thing. It should, it would be not just a lunch ticket. It would have to be more than fifteen dollars, more like hundred or more. So, uh, for them to keep the name in the list. So, so I think we need two things that uh, which should be part of it. So, okay. thank you. Okay. All right. Do we note it? I only could, I, I guess what I would add is that's right. If if we're gonna take in a maintenance fee to, to have to keep your name on a list. Um, but we have to show clear commitment on, on the city's part then to do that. So if the city's gonna say, okay, we're gonna charge you $150 a year to keep your name on this list for uh, hangar development, we, we, we really have to at least show those people that we have a resolution, that we have a, a, a common council a commitment to, to moving ahead with something. So d just a statement on their part that, that um, the, the, the city is committed to moving ahead with uh, hangar development. Yeah. Not, putting this, not, not putting anybody in a place where we're saying you're, we're committed to moving ahead because we have the money. We're committed to moving ahead because you know, we, have, we have all these um, um, call it technical assurances from the DOA and FAA. But the city is showing a will through mm -hmm. a majority vote by the common council that when push comes to shove, there will be some hangar development. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know we have to obviously do environmental impact studies. There's a lot of technical things that have to happen. And we know that any one of those could potentially solve the process that we, mm -hmm. we get it. But, but we, need, we need the will of the city. We need the will of administration. We need the will of, of, of the representation to say, Yes, let's let's do some hangar development at the airport. So the, the way I would structure the question, I would say something like, um, um, at, at the time of uh, the city's approval or for additional hangar space, would you be willing to provide a five hundred dollar deposit and then whatever the holding fee is because. As we all know, there's the approval, and then there's all the wheels of industry that have to go through. And like you said, there's the environmental impact um, they're going to do. I mean, there, there's a whole raft of things that the, that the FAA is going to do. And so it's going to be, you know, years probably out. But at the time the city says yes and makes the request of the FAA for um, the expansion of that area, that's that should be a trigger point. And at that time to stay on the list, you have to cough up your $500 and then your um, annual fee or whatever it is. And then some good faith where they could use it against, um, you know, in, in, in the future, right? Against whatever is determined. So- uh, Absolutely. Yeah, we have to figure exactly. out the language, but yeah, I'm exactly. good with the idea. I'm definitely on board with the idea. Yeah, I, I just think, you know, asking people for money when, the city isn't willing to say uh, we want to develop, or you know, yeah. that, that's my that's my concern. Yeah, it should be at the time of approval. Yeah, so there's multiple steps to begin with. We want to know the interest and whether yeah. they will be willing to, you know, make some commitment, not just you know, say yes and no to a survey. So right, it's a chicken and egg thing. Mm -hmm. So okay. Um, if there's anything else, if not, what- Can I, John, part? if I may, one more concept to add to this. Um, you know, in addition to the list of people that that uh, 
uh, is being maintained at the airport that Rich Mori has been providing to people upon request. We have also periodically received requests like the mayor just received one again this week and, and I did too, um, repeating a request from a couple of years ago from an individual who wants to be on the list. So, and some people may not be on the list. And so the, oh, reason, yeah. I bring, the reason I bring that up is this speaks again to the distribution and the availability of the survey, making sure that, mm -hmm. that you know, people who, some people who want hangar space are not necessarily based at the airport. No, no, and, I, and I've got names myself that I need to provide to whoever's perfect. distributing. Right, this so I mean, instrument. I'm just buttressing the argument that we need to make sure that the list is accessible, or that the survey that you've developed with Rich, that mm -hmm. that's accessible, properly accessible to people who want to respond to it. You know, if you put it uh, on the if you put it on the city's website, and there was some form of advertisement, you know, in the I don't know how the city does, you know, their advertisement for things they intend to do. So we could mail it out, we could post it in the newspaper, we could make the chamber of commerce aware of it. You know, there are some basic steps I think we could do once we have a have an instrument and a means to for people to get to it. And if it's on the web, it'd be great because then they could just. Hey. Yeah. They can do it pretty rapidly. Yeah. So the next step is, Mark, why don't we try to convert con convert this to an instrument, a survey instrument, and then figure out how to get it maybe on the website. And we'll build a strategy between now and next time on how we're going to get it out there and who it goes to. So we'll build a business plan around it. Are there any other changes specifically that the commission members are directing be added to the survey? I mean, not based on the discussion, I'm not sure if I heard, I heard a few ideas here and there, uh, but is there any other direction that you're providing to staff? The only ones that I saw that were, um, that, that, that I, I noted here, that, you know, the terms of the, terms of the lease, of course that will, uh, if you wanna embed that in there, that the term of the, the 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 land lease would be you know ten or fifteen year whatever our standard is, um, and then we were there was one that we we're going to have unleaded to fuel. Someone Commissioner yeah, Norman talked yeah, about. I'll get to that in a second. We had a oh, question. I'm sorry. No, not a problem. We had a question that um, if at the time of uh, the the city's recommendation um, to a uh, request to the FAA, if they would be willing to put in a five hundred dollar deposit. Um, to uh, guarantee their spot on the list. And then as, um, as David said, um, maybe um, an estimated, um, you know, that's awful hard to figure out, but we can ask if they had that estimated gallons per year and whether or not it would be, um, they could use unleaded fuel, leaded or unleaded fuel. You'd have to give them a pick list. It'd be a hundred low lead jet A or the whatever the the, the um... I would say um, don't even ask them on volume. Just just have a, a checkbox on there. Um, what fuel can you consume? Uh, Jet A. What type of fuel? What type 100, of fuel? 100, uh, you know, LL or uh, um, UL. Just 90, you know. Yeah. 87 UL. Yeah. 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 And then, exactly. And, then, and, and also Jet A. So a jet, um, leaded and unleaded check boxes, and they can just check them and go, oh, okay, we see that this person can consume unleaded, yeah, or leaded or all three, yeah, got it. I assume my only notes, Mark. That's that works for me. Thank you. Okay, I think we got enough direction. We could take it to the next step. Um, the next item up for discussion is the event request for the EAA. Um, this is an annual, uh, an annual event. We have a process that we have uh, developed. Um, and it's fair now that since we have a process, the EAA and everybody follow it. The first step of that process is the approval of the uh, airport manager that says that this is a safe um, uh, and uh, the, the event appears to be safe um, and also uh, will not imp uh, significantly impact the operations of the airport. <clears throat> and so and it has never in the past. So, and then once that's done, it really, most of the other requirements are city requirements, well, you know, music and, and, you know, parking and 
all of the other things are really city-based. Airport, our focus is safety and operations. So, Rich, you've looked at it, and what is your recommendation here? Absolutely uh, approve it, John. Okay. Um, I, I think it's a big city event. A lot of kids come to it. It's really great for aviation. Um, I would make a motion that we approve the EAA's event request for July 10th. Do I hear a second? I, I have a seconded, but I also have a question after okay. that. that uh, We're going to get to that. So we have okay. a first and a second. Okay, so now the discussion. Okay, Mayor, you're on. Yeah, so I was going through this application. So I was seeing that uh, they haven't paid the fee yet. So what did they be paying fee a little bit later or what is the status there? The oh, fee, the, what fee are you referring to, Mayor? Oh, $100. So it's uh, the large event fee. So it's, uh, you see that right, right at the top? Uh, page one. Permit fee is $100. Okay. Yeah, the permit fee is $100. So it's not uh, paid or received as far as I can see. Uh, they don't pay it to us. The permit fee goes to the city. So yep, yep. I, I can't answer that question. But okay. the special event permit um, is issued by the city. And if they don't get their $100, I'm sure you're not going to issue it. Okay. Okay. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, this is actually an interesting question because my understanding is they don't need any of the, uh, they probably don't even need license and ordinance approval because there's no uh, alcohol being sold and there's no uh, amplified sound permit. So there's, parking. pardon me? Is parking an issue? Well, I understand that, but it's not something the city, I don't believe LNO has, in fact, I know that LNO wouldn't, their focus has been amplified sound and um, uh, alcohol. And neither of those is an issue here, yes. other than, a, I guess, the fire engine noise. <laughs> well, who does the $100 uh, go to? So I I don't know if that, I, I, I don't, I can't speak to this, how, if this has been paid or not. This, this is a, um, Rich, maybe you can speak to, I mean, this was simply, you just provided this. This is the form. Actually, I just- It goes to tourism. The tourism yeah, have the to approve it. Form. I just realized you didn't give us the airport form, or is that back no, here? No, I'm afraid not. Um, yeah, this is, they must have pulled it off the website. This is what they gave me, and I gave oh. it a quick, quick look, but um, it oh. certainly has approval. We can go through the airport form, but I would say this covers pretty much everything the airport form covers, doesn't it, John? And we can. Yeah, but you should have them. I mean, for fairness for everybody, we should all have a standardized process and they should fill out the form. Okay. I know that we'll all say yes to it. Uh, because Here's what happened. I got this from Rich right before I posted the packet. And uh, Rich, I'm not saying this to throw you under the bus. I didn't even look to see which form he gave me. I just uploaded it. I thought it was the airport form. So Mayor, the answer to your question is they filled out the wrong form. That's the answer to your question. Mm -hmm. So they should have given us the airport form, yeah. uh, the form that we put together. So, um, and, and Rich, that's, I'm not gonna blame you for that. That's, you know, that's just, it was just a, an oversight. You thought you had sent it to me and it hadn't gotten to me. And, and so I asked you for it and then I got this. So I, so, but the, the point is we know what the event is. We know that Rich as manager is signing off on this because he's intimately familiar with the event. Yes. And um, so the issue before the airport commission tonight is from an airport commission standpoint, do you have any objections to the event being held on airport property? That's really what's before you tonight. That's the purpose yeah. of the airport. With the, with the understanding that we'll get the proper form filled out, but they do yeah. have, have insurance as they need to for liability. We've got proof of that. So yeah, they're as far as I'm concerned, they're ready to roll. And uh, well, I made a motion that the airport commission make a recommendation to approve it, which I think is appropriate. Okay. We do that with all the other ones. And uh, the mayor seconded. it. And if there's no other discussion, I guess we should just take a vote. And then, um, you know, Rich will get the rest of the paperwork and uh, after the fact, but it's, like may, I said, it's, it's may a- May I make a suggestion, John? Yes, you um, can. Given your, your good description of, of the focus of the airport commission in terms of your role with reviewing these events and the, and the new process we have. Yes. You said the focus is on safety and operations. Yes. May I suggest that you include in your motion uh, simply a statement that you determined that this event would not have a negative impact on safety and operations, and maybe that could be the motion. 
Um, okay. And that and way, because I, I don't think it needs any further city approval beyond that. And that's why, okay. I, okay. If that's okay, all right. So I make a, so we, so we make the motion to kind of, we, we would, uh, would make the city aware. Um, we would say that the, the, the airport commission has no objections because it has no impact on safety and operations. I'm trying to figure out the word. Or, or you could say it will have an acceptable impact on safety and operations. I mean, whatever words you want to use, Brian, maybe I, I'd turn to you for any guidance you have. But um, I think the process that we've had where it was just LNO approval, my understanding of the impetus for this was you didn't want just license and ordinance committee and they didn't want to only be the ones reviewing events. They wanted airport commission recommendations. Right. In this right. case, there's no need to recommend to the LNO committee because they don't have jurisdiction. So I yeah. think what you're trying to do is to determine the, from an airport commission, from an operations and safety standpoint, you're supporting the event or you have no objection or, or whatever. And Elder Hanero maybe has a suggestion. Hanero, excuse me. I'm still going to learn that, Lisa. Okay. Thank you. I you appreciate it. Go ahead. Sure. Yeah. I just had a, I, I, I'm fine with the special event going forward. I just had a question about, Mark, your comment that LNO doesn't have jurisdiction over this because if it's an application for a permit of any kind, like it, who, was, who would be the one approving it then it, if it's it, not? That, that's the point I was trying to make. I think they didn't need to fill out this form. That I think this was a, a, a form that was sent, that was used in error. I think they simply needed, because I don't think the only things that LNO reviews, and I, I'm, I'm just, well, the only thing, the only jurisdiction that they've seen over the years is they look at amplified sound permits you know, when there's a band at Kiva, for example, they approve that or, or capital flights request with Rock the Ramp, they have to prove that because that's that's exceeding our ordinance standards. And then uh, alcohol, that is where they specifically have to grant approval. That's the only time the LNO committee over the years gets involved with events, regardless of if they're at the airport or Middleton Good Neighbor Festival, what have you. Otherwise, the LNO committee doesn't get involved. So I'm not sure what, I mean, unless there's a tourism, and this is obviously the tourism forum, and um, and is there any is there any cost to using the airport facilities? It's, well, it's maybe this form it's, maybe, it's, maybe it is appropriate to have this form. Then I, I I don't know. I can't speak to it. I just know that the airport commission's role is to determine whether you know how you feel about the event in terms of the use of the airport for that event. That's really the question before you for this purpose tonight. Whether they need this form or not, um, maybe I shouldn't have been so quick to say they don't need the form. Well, but, the, the LNO can decide that. It, you know, well, if, it's, not LNO. it's tourism, well, and I don't, I don't have any relationship with this process. So, the tourism department is the one that needs to have that. Uh, so, how about this? If I just to help us move this along, okay. um, if you uh, make the determination that this is appropriate uh, use, use of the that the event is a, is suitable for the airport, or however you want to say it, and to advise the applicant to. Uh, ensure that the paperwork is, or that they that they consult with tourism regarding the appropriate uh, permissions, or something like that. And I would add and pay any any applicable fees, just you know, because it seems like there should be a cost to use the airport facility, just like there is to use Lakeview Park Shelter. Yeah, I, I the, don't know what that is, but yeah, we we don't charge for the airport because these are all charitable. Um, these are like not private parties. These are all. Uh, for the development of aviation and and um, and for the community, so we've never charged anybody any fees um, over the twenty years I've been around, um, or twenty plus years I've been around there, um, just because of the nature of it. If it was a commercial, something commercial, that might have a different slant to it, and I would definitely say, yeah, you know, you need to rent our conference room, right? If you're gonna have a business meeting there, there's an hourly fee. But for this, it's for kids and, and it's the community event. So I don't really, I don't think that's necessarily applicable. So let me take another stab at my motion and then um, I'd like to modify it then. Um, that the airport commission um, uh, 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 from a safety and operation standpoint uh, does not object to this event, um, uh, but does require that the applicant um, attain uh, any applicable uh, uh, permits from the city. 
Okay, I second that one now. So I think that I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. So also, you know, Mark, you would know how it was done 2018, 2019. I guess there's a history. So we should know the process. So we should follow the process before the pandemic. So yeah. there was no other process, Mayor. They simply held the event. We didn't have, I mean, this is all fairly recent. Uh, uh, we are, this is a recent development here, the airport approval process, the event yeah. approval process. We, we wanted something in place that was codified that people could, would know how to do it and it would be fair to all people because it would be consistent. You know? I'm okay with the resolution where it's part of it is that okay. they need, if they need more paperwork, they do it. So thank okay. you. Yeah, uh, David, uh, any uh, discussion? Well, I, I just want to point out, I think what it is, is it's just the confusion. We have that form um, that Rich Rich has. It's a simple survey form. Yeah. And got confused is really what it boils down to. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a copy? Um, and if Mark has a copy, he could even show it to the commission sure. so they know what it looks like. It's pretty simple. Basically, it's... Uh, you know, uh, uh, number of attendees and aircraft, uh, et cetera. And then Rich reviews it in the times of the day. Okay, so Rich, Rich you had your hand up. Okay, uh, John, it will address the idea of cost here. Yeah. The event is uh, held largely, or almost completely on land that I lease from MEDC. The, the pancakes are served in, uh, in my hangar or in the hangar that I lease. Uh, we don't charge, a, the city doesn't charge a fee for airplanes to park here overnight. Uh, there is no charge for parking uh, on this facility as far as I've ever been involved with. So if there is a cost to anyone, it's more airplane company sponsoring this event. Uh, the, there is no reason for the city to uh, charge a fee, as far as I can tell, because I'm letting them use my facility mm -hmm. for the uh, for the use or for all of this. Um, that said, uh, you know, there never has been a, a fee in the past. I don't see that there should be a fee in the future. This, the money that is raised is uh, put into scholarships that go back into the community. Okay, we have a motion, a first and the second. Um, any more discussion before I call the vote? I have the form right here. Um, okay, this is an airport request form. Yeah, so this is, let me blow it up a little bit. It's very simple, very yeah. basic. Mm -hmm. And then I have the motion that I've heard you draft. Okay. As well. By the little historical context to our new members, um, that form simply came about because what we really wanted to know was um, the physical impact, um, cars coming and going into the parking lot, um, more airplane movement around the, the, the tarmac, uh, people who you know normally don't come out to an airport are gonna be walking around in the area. And in this case, the EAA chapter historically um, always has volunteers. They actually wear red vests. They um, direct traffic. They um, put uh, barricades up, uh, tape barricades, uh, cones, um, and, and um, things like that. So it's, yeah. Okay. Simple form. And, and yes. And May I ask about um, liability insurance? Because I see there's um, the form that they didn't need to use has a checkbox for obtaining special event insurance. I don't know if that is the type of insurance I'm envisioning. If you do have you know 1,200 people coming out and somebody gets injured, is that on Maury Air Airplane Company or is that on the city? How does that work? Are, I Lisa, I'd like asking, to retract, do we have the assurances? I, I'd like to retract the statement that they don't need to fill out this form. I simply don't know. What I was trying to say is that they don't need license and ordinance committee approval. That was okay. that was the statement I will make. Um, but in terms of whether they need to fill this out to address these other points, that's up to the tourism uh, committee, to, or to, not committee, uh, tourism department staff to figure out. And that's part of the motion now is to make sure that they 
advise of any necessary permits and fees. I think the insurance issue and all that is still very important. And so I obviously we want to make sure that's all in place. Okay. Thanks. I mean, we, we don't want to encroach on city processes. Our role is purely airport. Does it is it operations? And then does it impact our operations? Does it impact safety um, uh, on the ground or otherwise? And and that's really the scope of what we can say yes or no to. Um, and that's the only thing that the city looks for us to. And then everything else beyond that is based on current city processes and they need to decide whether or not the event is go forward or not. So I'm very um, concerned about the limits of what our control is, our span of control. It's safety and operations mostly. So. Okay, so can I see the motion again, Mark, and then we'll call a vote, just to make sure it's accurate. Uh, to determine the airport does not object to this event from a safety and operations standpoint, and to advise the applicant to obtain any necessary permits and fees uh, from the city. I think that is correct. Well, okay, and, and with that, I'd like to, if anybody- how about a, To advise the applicant to follow the city permitting, or um, follow, the city permitting process? Yeah. Maybe that's yeah. good enough. That yeah, includes right? fees. For the process of obtain, uh, obtaining the necessary permits and pays the fees. I, yeah, okay. Well, that, that's all the part permitting of process that. includes fees. Is that okay? Exactly, that's okay. true. So um, that's the motion. And so I'd like to call a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. We made it through this one. I thought it was pretty simple. <laughs> it was going to be pretty simple. Uh, well, it's part of our uh, process next, improvement. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, exactly. We'll, we'll get there. You know, it always gets better. Um, the last part is really an update on uh, uh, migrating from leaded to unleaded fuel. So this will really tie back into. Chair, you're uh, missing one. You, you're uh, you're oh, missing the sorry. number four. Yep, yeah. number four. The airport managers and fixed base operators annual performance evaluation. Embedded in the contract for airport manager and fixed base operation um, is the request for an annual performance review, um, which is smart. Any long-term contract should have an annual review. And so the airport, this was abstracted earlier from the contracts of what is required um, of the airport manager and the FBO. And we tried to put that together. Um, so as I abstracted it out, we looked at it. And from this, we created um, a, a 360 form, if you will, that we evaluated these against. And so you wanna go up to the form we designed. So last year we had an uh, airport manager evaluation form. Um, we had uh, the airport manager, but we also had um, somebody from the city there and somebody from the commission. Um, so we, you know, we tried to get multiple stakeholders. I almost hate you saying stakeholders anymore. It's used so much, but we have multiple people um, and viewpoints in um, on operations and people that would know operations. And so we could evaluate the operations against performance. Last time I did it with Mark and, and Luke Fazard. Um, and we, we went through it with Rich. And so we took those ratings, if you will, and we do as you roll, rotate up, Mark. So we went, talked about the areas, key general conduct, um, maintenance, airport maintenance. And this all ties back to the contracts and what the requirements of the contracts are. And then we discussed where we thought everybody was in and we made comments associated with it. Um, and then when we all got down with it, um, we, I think we all signed it um, and agreed to it. So that's, that was the process. And I think the process uh, should be similar this time. We also came up with a survey for people who use the airport about how they felt the service was. So how was the snow plowing and as the grass maintained? Um, you can just rotate it up, Mark. And these went to all the land leases, their terminal building, instrument approaches, 
has our maintenance services, fuel options and availability. Pilot training and education, can people, or is it available? What are the new services you would like to see? So again, this went to the users of the airport. And it didn't go quite in this form. This was the draft, and then it was adapted by my colleague Abby for. Yeah. Um, I think she used Survey Monkey to do it. Yeah. Um, so. So th this is the process. Um, any any comments, suggestions, or changes? I think it looks really good, uh, especially this uh, questionnaire sending to those uh, users. That's really good. Yeah. And, and I like, uh, you know, I, I guess the valuations help rich and it helps the city and the airport. So that's good. It's a, it's a, it's an, it's an, uh, a standard 360 evaluation process mm -hmm. that businesses use every day. Yep. So it is adapted off of the contract. So I think it should be accurate. Yep. I think that's excellent. There's so e. <laughs> the process should be then. Um, we should, first of all, get Abby to get the questionnaire out. I think the questionnaire would be good to have the results in hand when we actually sit down with the evaluation form. And then, um, you know, Mark, obviously you've been involved in this thing. Um, we can pick a couple of other people. Um, I don't necessarily have to be on it. Somebody else can be on it. Does anybody, you know, Luke, do you want to do this again? You did it last time. I mean, what's your area of interest? Luke, are you there? Oh, Luke is, I'm not, I don't see Luke at the moment. Okay. He's oh, there he is. No, he is. Bottom. Yeah, he's at the bottom. I see him. I mean, this is I, a thing. Well, okay. While we're waiting for Luke to respond. Yeah. Sorry, Mr. I'm here. Chair, I'm I, here. I'm here. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I see your hand, Lisa. Go ahead. Yeah, I just had a couple of comments. One, I think <clears throat> the process is a good one. I have no problem with the process. Um, on the survey, I had a couple of things I wanted to know. One is if this survey is being used as part of the um, airport manager's evaluation, I think it should state that in the introduction to the survey. I think it's a good idea to solicit feedback, but I I don't think that's clear that um, this is going to affect somebody's or go into somebody's job performance evaluation. So I would suggest adding that to the, the preface to this. And then yep. also, I wonder about collecting, is it necessary to collect uh, the name of the respondent? Because if, if you want you know, candid, resp candid responses, making name a required response uh, field, um, I think, you know, it, there's a reason why things like this are done confidentially. Um, so if this is going to be a public record um, and, and the name is required, I, as someone who has done surveys, would wonder about the, um, the candor of the respondents. Now, having said that, I, I'm assuming we have the ability to send this link um, perhaps a personalized link to each of the air airport um, users so that they're the only people who could fill out the survey. If that's not possible, then I would understand the need to keep the, um, keep the name as a required field. And yes. then right. the, just two more questions or comments. On the evaluation form, I noted that there are 22 items on the evaluation form, but only 20 in the list of the airport manager responsibilities. I didn't go over it with a fine tooth comb to figure out mm -hmm. what two are not well, in the responsibilities, but that- They're combined. Two. I think some of them are just combined as a concept. Okay. And as we go through it, the person that's doing the evaluation has the, has the, the key uh, requirements and takes okay. those into consideration in answering the categorical questions. Okay, that's good. And then my final comment is on the um, airport manager responsibilities, specifically the second page item 18 that says agree that no person on the grounds of age, race, etc. Um, shall be excluded from airport usage. I would feel more comfortable using the language right out of the um, um, assurances, item 30, civil rights on page 14. I'm not looking at the sign. I don't think this is the signed version we have, but 
Um, it specifically mentions uh, disability. It uh, next to national origin, it refers to in, in parentheses, it says including limited English proficiency. And it's more than just the usage and um, construction and maintenance. So I, again, I, I'd feel more comfortable when the, I mean, if this is in uh, the contract right now, it's got to stay the way it is. But yeah. I think it, it should duplicate the, contract, the This came out of the contract? Sure, so, I'm just saying for future contracts, it's. I would say yeah. it's important to make sure it exactly matches what's in the civil <laughs> rights. And certainly to say that you agree that no person, that's very different than ensuring that no person. I, I just think that's a, an important technical if the, term. If the city changes the contract, then we'll move, we'll move the language into the requirements. Okay, well, again, I, yeah. if we're interested in, if we're concerned about compliance and wanting to assure compliance, it seems like the assurances should mm -hmm. match what the expectation is for Rich, and you yep. know, I'm I'm sure Rich is following through. It's just that it's not worded the same as the assurances. I'd That's all. I'd suggest that you, we talk to the city, um, the city man, the new city manager, and maybe Larry, and you know, bring that up as a, I guess a council person. Um, I, I believe that the assurances, as, as Kevin said, is the the bedrock that we have to operate on. We it's a contract. Right, and if that contract, uh, the FAA paid tens of millions of dollars, right? And so th there's a lot of good faith there, a lot, a lot of finances. So um, the more we can do to align ourselves with another agreement that we've done, I think is a, I think is an excellent idea. Um, but for this document was really tied to what it says in his contract. Okay, but your points were very well made. Okay. I would just add one thing that this survey actually tells us uh, also about the airport too, because there are some things which uh, Rich can control and the others uh, he cannot. So it tells us uh, what people's expectations are. So it's more than just, uh, just his performance to, for me when I look at it. Thank you. And for my part, more airplane company, if the city feels that we need to update the verbiage as long as the meaning has not changed, I mean, not the meaning, you can look at the words, but essentially the, my contract hasn't been changed, it wouldn't be an issue with it to upgrade the, the verbiage to where it matches with uh, current uh, grant assurances. I don't have a problem with it. It would just amend it. It could just be amended. Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, when, when I read the, when I read it over, I, I in a broad perspective, I think some of the language just needs should we call it some modernization without, and it wouldn't change the intent of it in any way whatsoever. Okay. Um, like this what may, this may not be the actual survey we used in twenty twenty one. I think this was the draft we created, and then Abby may have der, der, taken a derivative from this, and so. Um, but I'd have to have that verified. Just like the FAA is modernizing their language, they're, they're removing um, terminology like cockpit, um, referring to pilot as he and so on and so forth. They're, they're, they're just modernizing everything to, to uh, be more in that sense. Okay. So uh, Mark, what have you captured for changes here? Suggestions for changes. Well, I what I heard you say is our first step as staff is to um, send out the survey, and it sounds like you want us to just double check a few things to make yeah. sure it's clear. It's clear that it's related to the performance evaluation of the airport manager. Yes. Um, and to make sure that the language you're, that we're using is linked to the FAA grant assurances, although we, as noted. Was that under 18? Oh, no, that was under the responsibilities, as, as Lisa noted. So um, I think the language, I haven't heard of any other wording changes for the survey that we send out, other than to link it to the airport manager. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's the very last question that we had about the end numbers and that, we wanted oh, to make right. sure, we wanted to make sure that the, 
survey wasn't tainted by people who were not airport based. And that's why we asked for the end numbers and the other information. Um, I, I hear you, it's kind of like a double-edged sword here, right? You well, want to know that. Yeah, so I mean, that was, I mean, in theory, you could get a, you know, I think it's it's worth considering that if somebody has filed a noise complaint and then they didn't get a satisfactory response, you know, I mean, that would be something we'd want to know. But from what I can have heard, I mean, I haven't heard of, well, no one's contacted me specifically. There have been people who have filed noise complaints who said they never, you know, that they don't, they don't get satisfactory responses, but that's their opinion. And they haven't filed a formal complaint with the city per se, but there are statements like that every once in a while that they feel uh, noise complaints aren't being responded to, but I have no have no reason to believe that Rich is not satisfactorily trying to address the concerns that we are getting. Yeah, um, I think th this survey though, what was the point of this, this survey is airport user, and it, that's what we're trying to get, make sure is like, is, a, is the snow being plowed? Or do you think the airport, uh, you know, maintained right. in a clean uh, manner? So this really has to do with people who physically use the airport. Not Thank necessarily you. people that are based here. It could be people that come here and leave. It could be, yeah. I don't know, FedEx. This is one data input. And then there's other things that the survey doesn't address. I think that's well stated. So, but that's why the end numbers are where there or the, uh, the names, the contact information is there is to make sure that the specific use of the airport and the, that those responses are from people who have a, a direct experience with working using, with using the airport. So well said, John. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, this really doesn't require, I think, a vote right now. We'll take everything into consideration. We'll craft the um, survey. We'll get the survey out and get some results for that. And then based on that, we'll schedule um, the, the annual performance evaluation. I think the last time we, we actually did it in October, so we're a little bit early, but you know, we'll get everything kind of moving. Does anybody have anything to add to that? If not, let's go ahead and move on to the, the last item here. Uh, I'll give you the update on the uh, mi uh, mid migration to the letter unleaded fuel. So you know, we went through a lot of gyrations trying to figure out how to get things funded. Um, and what funding source, you know, we're trying to get uh, to keep from spending city money. And so the final way that we found uh, that could work, that we could get to sit, that we could get on the AIP program was to install a separate new tank uh, and pumping facility adjacent to the existing facility. Um, the BOA and FAA will not buy somebody else's used facility. So by keeping it separate, it could be fundable. And um, at the direction of the last airport commission meeting, we made a decision that um, we were going to hire an engineer get the engineering drawings, and then we were gonna get a price. And then at that time, we would make a decision whether we would go forward or not go forward. And then we would have an implementation schedule. Um, and we would know exactly what we, were, what we were spending and where it went. So that is the direction that we have given the BOA. And that is the conditions of the petition that we've already made is they are to do the engineering, um, uh, select the engineer, do the engineering, and provide an estimate of the cost. And then based on that, the airport commission would then make a recommendation. Um, we we'll already have, I think, approval since it's on, it's on the list that the Common Council voted for. Um, we would then make a decision economically whether or not it's something that we think we should go forward with. Now, if it requires a motion to the city, back to the city, I don't think it does, but um, this is ground we've already covered and the council's already voted on everything else. So I think the runway is, is clear here, but we just need to know what we're signing up for. 
So that's the status as it sits today. Does Rich anybody have any question. questions about the process or where we're at? Rich and the mayor both do. Okay, I'm sorry, Rich, you're, you're next. Okay, um, the question I would have then is are we, is this envisioned as a self-service tank? And if so, how are we gonna incorporate the card reader? Uh, you know, the unit I have can operate, but if it has to be completely new, there'll be some additional expense, of course, to put it in, but that's the way it works with the state. Um, I'm just trying to make sure that it's compatible because yeah. our job is we will be buying the fuel and we'll be selling the fuel. Yes. And, uh, yeah. I think that the, uh, the wiring to the card reader should not be an obstacle, but it's glad that you brought that you, you brought that up because we did cover earlier, they can handle multiple fuels more than the two that we have. Yeah. And it's already in place and it's an expensive proposition to set up the process. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, when uh, Mead and Hunt will likely do the engineering and we'll just make sure that they know that that's what's contemplated. Mm -hmm. But that's a good point, Rich. Yeah, well, it, it wouldn't make sense to have a separate card reader per se, but if that's the only way we can get it funded, we'll get it, we'll make it work. Yeah, so. I don't think, I, I don't think that would be a problem. Thank you. Yeah. So, John, so I think, uh, so now BOA is doing everything now, right? I think that's what we have decided. So yes. they will do the engineering and they will, so they are the one doing all of this stuff, right? That is correct. We were trying to do it okay. to save money to the city, but the city is just really not set up for it. And, well, absolutely. And also then uh, we will get uh, some money from BOA. Uh, yeah, that yeah, was no. This would be... This would be uh, pretty much all taken care of out of the uh, AIP funds. Yep, yep. So now what is the timeline? Where are they? Uh, well, they're selecting. They were waiting for uh, some paperwork that Mark got them. And the, actually, they had it. And they didn't realize they had it, which was our request. And that is on the uh, our uh, projects, uh, our projects document that gets published in the newspaper and then gets approved. And there was a whole list of projects in, in no specific order. Um, and that is the request form. And so they have the, the, the projects and they were notified that the um, unleaded uh, tank project um, was next up. And we did ask them the scope of the engineering and uh, design and estimate and the stop. And so they, they, they are aware of that. We did that in the last 30 days. So uh, he's on it. Is there any timeline? When um, are no, I don't, but I, I can get it and get it back to you. Okay, okay. It will be good to see that. And uh, so uh, I don't know if there's a, any further progress on unleaded fuel. I know we had all those newspaper articles going back and forth because uh -huh. uh, that's what will be used in these new tanks. And we are hoping that uh, that would be available by that time. That's uh, th that's the main motto here. So yeah, to... well, that's the reason we slowed it down and only went to the point of pricing it out because by the time they get that part done, EA, uh, EAA will have their Air Ventures event done. And at the Air Ventures is most of the major announcements every year. And if there's gonna be an unleaded fuel, um, approved by the FAA, we're going to hear about it at, at, at EAA. And that's uh, in August or when is July. it? July. July, okay. So wait until July. So we don't know anything more than what's already just in the news. Okay, all right. That's good enough. So yeah. we will get the timeline from BOA and then we wait for that uh, the fuel to be available and we will... Uh, probably once that's done, we will move quickly and uh, then go with it. So, all right. So, but I also heard that there are some planes which will be able to use unleaded and the others would be still uh, using the laddered, but that's a different situation to work on. Well, that's up to the EPA right now. Um, okay. I mean, there's a Reed Hill view um, there's a big war between the residents uh, around Reed Hill View and Reed Hill View in California. 
which is kind of the poster child case of whether or not um, blended fuel can be uh, take, take, or taken off a field and controlled. And whether or not it actually impacts the surrounding community. Uh, people have brought experts on both sides. Obviously, the answer is depending upon the side. The EPA said, thank you very much, but we are not accepting anybody's research. We will conduct our own research. It will be peer reviewed um, and we will control it from end to end. And we will make, uh, we will make an endangerment um, uh, report and and I thought that it may be even coming yet this year, so okay. um, you know there's EPA and FAA they 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 have dominion over this and they're working on it. Meanwhile, we'll mitigate any problems we can best we can. Okay, great. Uh, well, as soon as the unlead is available, we jump on it. That's what uh, let them debate on it. So that yes. would be yes. Okay, great job. Wonderful. Okay. okay. Any questions about that? All right. So I think that's all of our items. Um, so right now we will continue on uh, the airport financials. Next time I'll try to get you what the cost is and how we're going to pay for the resurfacing and what the timing looks like. The hangar survey, hopefully we'll get uh, the user survey out and we'll be postured to do uh, the the uh, surround 360 uh, evaluation uh, for the performance. And then I'll keep you posted on the leaded and unleaded fuel. Is there anything else that is near and dear to everybody's heart that you might want to consider? If so, like always, if you let me know, I'll take a look at it. And if it fits into the agenda and it's appropriate, I'll put it on the agenda. And I'll list the Young Eagles event here since, uh, for June 11th, since that date is now known. I'll put that on, on this too. Great. All right, I think that's it. Um, anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Okay, I make that motion. Okay, and I'll second it. Uh, so we have a motion to adjourn in a second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Bye. 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 I'll see you all in a month. Thanks. Bye.